Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to check disk space and usage on Linux. Alright, so before I jump into this, a couple quick uh, practical commands that I wanted to show you. Just really useful stuff, just so you get something useful right at the beginning of the video before uh, getting into some of the details and going on and on about it. Alright, so one, one really useful thing is, uh, is um, just the du-sh asterisk. So, this is going to give you the usage for, so the S makes it non-recursive and the H makes it human readable. So it'll give you all the files and directories in the current directory. Um, and it's going to give it to you in a human readable format. So M for megs, K for K, and it won't do it recursive. So it won't give you a huge mess of files. Um, we'll get into more detail that, on that in a sec. The other useful command is uh, du-a um, sort dash NR. So the A is going to make it. So this is going to be recursive, and the A is going to give you all files and directories instead of just directories. Now we're going to sort by by number. So that's the dash N, and the R is for reverse. Let's just try dash N first. All right, go by number and dash R in reverse, and then you can say head. That's going to give you the top ten largest files and directories for, from the current directory. So just wanted to show you that real quick. Now we're going to jump into this and show you all of this in more detail. So um, I'm here in a test directory that I've created. And um, I have a few things in here, a couple directories and a few files. Now we're, we're going to check the disk usage for this. So um, we're, we're going to start with the df command. And then we're going to look at the du command and then come back to the df command and some of the options in just a sec. All right, so for the df command, you would uh, you can say df dash h. Now, what this is going to do is going to tell you all of your. Uh, it's going to show you the disk usage for every uh, file system you have on your system. A lot of these these are not real file systems. You can ignore them. They're just for the snap system. Um, it's kind of annoying that all this stuff shows up in in Linux these days. It didn't used to a long time ago. But let's just uh, filter this out. So grep dash v loop. All right, for some cleaner output. Um, and there we go, nice clean output. So if you filter out loop and tempfs, you're gonna get the real output. So these are your file systems. So df-h will give you this. Now you'll see I have a couple disks on the system. Um, I also have this udev device that you, you can pretty much ignore for the most part. Um, any case, I have two, two physical drives on the system. Um, technically, I have another drive that just isn't mounted. Um, I actually have a few others that aren't mounted. But anyways, NVMe and uh, yeah. Anyway, so my root file system and this boot file system, and, and that's it. So, um, and you can see it's uh, usage is 60%, 1%. It's a terabyte, and it's using, uh, you know, half of that about and uh, yeah, it doesn't really add up to exactly a uh, thousand gigs anyways um, so that that's how you can check the usage of that and uh, that that's with the df-h command now you can also say df df-h period and hit enter that's going to give you the disk you should usage for whatever file system you're currently in so right now I'm in this directory, so this is on my root file system, so it gives me the usage of this file system. Now, say if I were under boot EFI, oops, um, let's, let's use sudo. Right. I think this is worth showing you. All right, so df-h, and there we go. It shows you the usage of the EFI system. All right, so let's get out of here. So, um, and if I had a mounted disk, I, I could show you that too. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna mount a disk just to show you. All right, so we have a few drives here, and uh, let's take a quick look. All right, so this is, this is the drive we just looked at, and, um, this is a SATA drive. So this is NVMe, this is SATA. Let's mount this guy. Now, now, 
Now here you will you'll notice. All right, so this is using the df command that we used before. Um, you notice we have a couple NVMe drives and and a, a, a SATA drive right here. So let's uh let's say, say if we were we were to go where that drive is mounted and say df -h. There we go. So we, we can check the usage and everything on that drive also. So there we go, that, that's useful. Um, we, we can also say, um, you, you could specify a directory too. It, it doesn't have to be your current directory. You could specify, say, root like that. Or you, you could even specify, uh, you, you could even specify that other directory where our SATA disk is mounted without actually going there. So that, that's incredibly useful. Um, that's the DF command. Um, oh, you, you can also specify the device. So you could, you could say, you could, you could specify the mount point or the device, like dev SDA1, and there we go. So that, that, that's a really useful command. Um, let's, let's move on to the DU command. So DF will tell you the, the usage of, of different drives and stuff. All right, let's clear this out. So let's cd into the test directory that I created. All right, so let, let's search for things based on size in here. All right, so we're gonna, we, first off we can say du-h. Now this is gonna check the current directory recursively and only check directories. And the, the h, well, before you even do dash h, just just do du. You can run the du command by itself, and it shows you all the directories and their usage in bytes. Now, if, if you add a dash h, it's going to show them in a human readable format. So megs where it makes sense, k where it makes sense, bytes where it makes sense, and gigs where it makes sense, right? Um, nothing in here is a, a gig in size, but um, let's see here. We can also add the a parameter and it now gives us files uh, files in the current directory files in the subdirectory in addition to directories so uh, that's going to give us files and directories so it's it's also still recursive um, now you can also say sh now sh is going to give you the total usage for the current directory if you run it by itself now you can also get the usage for a specified directory so you could you could say um, you could say uh, well, well first you know what let's just start with the current directory. So oh you, you know what this is uh, better if if we use uh, well, you can say asterisk and get everything in the current directory without it being recursive. So the S is going to prevent it from being uh, recursive, and uh, you you could specify a directory like uh, I guess Python. Three, if you want to do the Python three directory, or JDK. Now you you could also specify as those without the S option. You you could just check the usage of everything in there. Um, you, you could specify it with the A option or whatever else, right? But um, but yeah, if if you want to uh, if you want to do this non-recursively, basically the S is is H is human readable, S is non-recursive. So um, you, you could do that for the current directory or you could specify the directories and you could specify, asterisk will just give you everything in the current directory without giving you this huge mess of a list here. So you can just kind of get an overview of what's here. It'll give you files and um, and uh, directories. So for, from there you could, you could say, uh, you, you could dig deeper. Like say if you see Python is, is big and you want to you, you want to see what's uh, being used a lot in there, you, you could start looking at that if you want to. Um, so you, you could specify Python 3 like we did before. And uh, this is just going to give you this. You, you could specify it like that and look for what's the largest subdirectory in here. We notice it's the lib directory. So maybe we want to go, obviously this is pointless with Python, but um, you know, you, you, you could search for the largest file, see what's taking up the most space in there. And we can see it's a bunch of library files, right? 
So um, that's kind of the process you would use if you were hunting down um, disk space. Um, I mean, I guess you could also print them all out like this and sort them. That's another useful thing um, that I should show you. I, I should cover sorting. Um, so you, you might say A, all right? And um, so you're gonna search everything recursively, du-a, files and directories, and take away the H so it's not human readable. And this makes it, this, this will give it to us in bytes, but now that makes it sortable. So you can say sort dash N, um, and that's gonna give it to us um, in order with the largest ones at the bottom. You could use an R to put the largest ones at the top. And you could also pipe this to, um, you, you could pipe this to, uh, say that the head command, right? And get the top 10. And you, if you wanted to, you could say dash N 20 to get the top 20. So you can get the top 20 files and directories worth pointing out. It's going to give you, it'll give you say, for example, Python three and Python three lib. So, um, that, that that's a little bit redundant but it's still gonna help you hunt down large files and stuff. Um, and see, see, basically see what's using up the most space. And it only, only issue with this, um, if, you, if you print these out in, a, in like a user readable format with the dash H, you can't sort them. So um, you, you do sort dash NR, N is for numeric. So it's gonna sort by a numeric order using this first column and R is gonna be in reverse order. So you need them in bytes. Now, if you want to check the actual size of a, one of these given files, you might check it like this. So this is why this is a little bit of a pain. But you can check the file. That's a 45 meg file. So one of the larger files is a 45 meg file. Now, um, you could also use the du command for that if you want. And it's also gonna tell you the size of the file. It's a little bit simpler output. You wouldn't have to filter out permissions and users and stuff like that. All right, so let's jump back to the df command. So df, now that's that'll give us all these uh, file systems. Now you, you can say df-h to give you give it to you in re user readable format. See gigs here, gigs, gigs, um, megs, and uh, kilobytes and so on. So um, you, you could do, you could also do M, which is there, there's almost no point in doing that. that that's gonna give it to you in megs and uh, you, you could also do K for kilobytes or you could just stick with the default and that's gonna be bytes. All right, anyways. Or it look, looks like it's K by default, which uh, all right, yeah, that that makes sense. I I believe maybe it used to be bytes a long time ago, so any anyways, it's not now. So um, or I could be wrong. So hopefully you found this useful or at least interesting. If nothing else, you might want to give me a thumbs up. Um, you might want to hit that subscribe button also and uh, hit the little bell icon up. Otherwise, uh, YouTube's probably not gonna let you know when we come out with a new video. Um, we do have a lot of great stuff coming up on, and we've actually, if you wanna check our list of videos, we've already put out a lot of uh, pretty interesting things, some more interesting than others. Um, we cover a lot of great stuff. Um, coding, servers, hardware, software, 3D printing, electronics, uh, single board computers, robots, networking, all sorts of great tech related stuff that you're not gonna wanna miss. So if you, if you want your YouTube feed to uh, you know, be that much more interesting, you're gonna wanna hit that subscribe button. But more important than any of that stuff, you're gonna wanna leave a comment down below, especially if you know something that I don't know. Um, definitely let me know, not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video and reads the comments. Um, leave a comment for them also. Any, any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you wanna say, I probably wanna hear it. So do leave a comment down below. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.